Okay, um, let's look at some uh, uh, features of the uh, monsoons. Uh, we had talked about this in chapter 1 itself, where we know that in DJF, when the sun is to the south, SPCZ, the uh, uh, high cloud region, the, uh, what did we call it, GCB, uh, great cloud band is strong and the ITCZ in the north uh, moves south over the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans even though it remains north over most of uh, the no uh, across the equator and the Indian Ocean has a clear southward shift of the ITCZ which is fairly strong corresponding to maximum uh, heating but in the summer we already talked about how it splits the warm ocean holds on to the marine ITCZ and ITCZ splits and creates a high rain uh, center over here related to the western ghats and the air sea interactions over the ocean as the southwesterly winds climb the mountain and the ocean begins to feel the winds and controls the moist static energy and so on. Here sea surface temperatures remain high and there is some literature showing that the atmospheric instabilities control the rainfall processes at interseasonal time scales but that is given the SST threshold. And you have the Burmese mountains here, Himalayan foothills and so on. And we have the strong cross equatorial winds that bring moisture, become southwesterlies. Um, people wonder about whether the African highlands here have something to do with the steering of the winds towards uh, the east, but those are not completely uh, Complete debates, completely complete debates, because the sea surface temperature distribution itself is responsible, for example, uh, for organizing the convection over here, and once the strong convection occurs here, it is able to pull this these winds uh, and demand moisture. So those kind of stories about uh, removing topographies uh, by prescribing SSTs are not uh, the full uh, uh, and the whole story. Uh, Keeping that in mind, looking at the African, we will ignore the Pacific for now, African monsoon, there is a actually Northeast North American monsoon here that we won't get into. African monsoon, you can see there is a strong uh, reversal of the winds itself. Uh, we have ITCZ to the north, heavy rainfall over Sahel, uh, Gulf of Guinea gets uh, rainfall, Gulf of Guinea and Sahel here. Um, and uh, the ITCZ migrates north and south and these uh, precipitation bands are part of the ITCZ, but nonetheless they are like monsoonal circulations. In terms of the physics, we have already talked about the cross equatorial pressure gradients, the absolute vorticity line, the inertial instabilities, the near equatorial westerly is needed to balance the vorticity uh, of the cross equatorial advection of uh, vorticity stretching and uh, uh, vorticity advection on all those good things. Um, keeping that in mind, looking at the uh, se sequence of uh, annual precipitation, so we see here that the Indian rainfall, uh, shown here in the, the solid line for 1870 to 1930 and 1930 to uh, 2007 or so, uh, you can see that the variability is fairly low. It's about 10% around the average of 850 uh, millimeter per year or so. For example, here, uh, Indian monsoon has 852 millimeter plus minus 84 millimeters, so 10%. But this has a little bit of a trend. There is a 10% decrease over the recent years, an increase in the extreme events which happen at uh, synoptic and intraseasonal time scale. Uh, North Australian rainfall has uh, a larger variability, lower mean, higher variability around the mean. Uh, Gulf of Guinea hardly has any variability again, plus minus 10%, whereas the Sahel rainfall has massive uh, uh, variability uh, at seasonal time scale and also interdecadal uh, time scale. So you can see the indication of the North Australian monsoon north of 25 south, as we said. Uh, having much higher variability than the Indian monsoon. Um, the same for the later decades with maybe some interdecadal variability that's already obvious here. For example, a shift towards uh, being above 
the long-term mean and there are periods when it is more below the long-term mean. There is similar indications of interdecadal variability in the Indian monsoon as well despite the low uh, standard deviation. Um, Guinea coast, you can see uh, the data has a clear interdecadal uh, variability here, uh, low interannual variability compared to for example Sahel. So Sahel uh, mean is uh, 465 uh, 465 millimeters and uh, okay this is I hope this is done right the number is up here but nonetheless uh, you can see that it has high interannual variability and I think this may be switched around yes it is okay the Guinea coast is the black line uh, and the Sahel is the red line here Peter okay we'll complain to Peter Webster about this uh, mistake nonetheless you get a sense of the uh, intermediate and uh, low frequency variabilities if you look at faster component we have already talked about the OLR variance uh, 2 to 10 days, 10 to 20 days, 20 to 60 days. You can see how these time scales light up. So we'll talk about the monsoon depressions which go from the Bay of Bengal into central India and bring a significant amount of the seasonal total rainfall and the northward propagating monsoon intraseasonal oscillations which happen on this side and on this side and not very much directly from the ocean onto land. So there is uh, rainfall coming from the Bay of Bengal and of course coming from the southwesterlies and you can see the equatorial region but the eastern equatorial Indian Ocean region has high variance. We talked about the cross, strong cross equatorial pressure gradient here that doesn't kick off inertial instabilities because it's under subsidence and uh, static stabilities is very strong. Uh, here. Okay, so there is a northeast monsoon variability which you can see a little bit uh, towards uh, the northern hemisphere into the Bay of Bengal. Uh, Sri Lanka for example gets uh, affected by both. We will come to that, those details. Uh, over the Atlantic, uh, uh, Sahel and Guinea coast is dominated by the much shorter synoptic time scale in terms of easterly waves. So these are uh, the Pacific band, but nonetheless uh, uh, we know that similar easterly waves exist in the uh, uh, Atlantic as well, which we said are related to cyclogenesis and hurricanes over the northern tropical Atlantic. Uh, and we also talked about how Madden Julian didn't find the 20 to 60 day or 20 to 90 day variability over the Atlantic. It was mostly focused on the Indian and Pacific Oceans. So those are the uh, various uh, time scale components in the South Asian, Australian and uh, Indian monsoons. Australian monsoon is also heavily affected by the Madden Julian oscillation. In fact, Australian season is uh, in the boreal uh, winter when the Madden Julian oscillation uh, is strong. Whereas in the summer season, when the Indian monsoon happens, we have the northward propagating monsoon interseasonal oscillation, which as we said before, is referred to as boreal summer interseasonal oscillations. So we will see the the uh, typical features of those. There are lots of issues uh, or lots of open science questions about the relation between MJOs and MESOs, monsoon interseasonal oscillations, uh, but there are processes that are uh, very common to both. So the time scale selection of the interseasonal uh, period itself is a big open question in many ways. Okay, we'll visit some of these issues uh, as we go along.